now we come to another sutta 3.7.65 this is the famous kalama sutta uh, it's not that a difficult sutta but it's a bit long on one occasion the exalted one while going his rounds among the kosalans with a great company of monks came to kesaputta a district of the kosalans now the kalamas of kesaputta heard it that gotama the recluse the sakin's cl- son who went forth as a wanderer from the sakin clan had reached kesaputta and this it was noise abroad about Gotama that the exalted one is an exalted one, Arahan, fully enlightened one, perfect in knowledge and practice, etc., etc. And it were indeed a good thing to get sight of such Arahans. So the Kalamas of Kesaputta came to see the exalted one. On reaching him, some saluted the exalted one and sat down at one side. Some greeted the exalted one, etc., etc. Then as they thus sat, the Kalamas of Kesaputta said this to the exalted one, Sir, Certain recluses and Brahmins come to Kesaputta. As to their own view, they proclaim and expound it in full. But as to the view of others, they abuse it, revile it, depreciate it, and cripple it. Moreover, sir, other recluses and Brahmins on coming to Kesaputta do likewise. When we listen to them, sir, we have doubt and wavering as to which of these worthies is speaking truth and which speaks falsehood. I just stop here to comment. Eh? This happens very often, eh? When people listen to monks, eh, they have different, uh, different monks give different opinions. So, in the same way, even the Buddha's time, uh, people were confused. So, they asked the Buddha uh, what to do when they, they have different opinions from different monks. So, the Buddha replied, Yes, Kalamas, you may well doubt, you may well waver. In a doubtful matter, wavering does arise. Now, look you, Kalamas. Be you not misled by report or tradition or hearsay. Be not misled by proficiency in the scriptures, nor by mere logic or inference, nor after considering reasons, nor after reflection on and approval of some theory, nor because it fits becoming, nor out of respect for a recluse. But Kalamas, when you know for yourselves, these things are unprofitable, these things are blameworthy, these things are censured by the intelligent, these things, when performed and undertaken, conduce to loss and sorrow. Then do you reject them, Kalamas? Now what do you think, Kalamas, when greed, loba, arises in a man, does it arise to his profit or to his loss? To his loss, sir. Now, Kalamas, does not this man thus become greedy, being overcome by greed and losing control of his mind? Does he not kill a living creature, take what is not given, go after another's wife, tell lies and lead another into such a state as causes his loss and sorrow for a long time. And he said, he does so, sir. Now what do you think, Kalamas, when hatred, dosa, arises in a man, does it arise to his profit or his loss? To his loss, sir. Now, Kalamas, does not this man thus become hateful, being overcome by hatred, losing control of his mind? Does he not kill? Does he not take what is not given, commit adultery, tell lies, and lead another into such a state as causes his loss and sorrow for a long time? And they replied, He does indeed, sir. And the Buddha said, Now what think you, Kalamas, when delusion, moha, arises within a man, does it arise to his profit or to his loss? And they said, To his loss, sir. And does not this man... Thus deluded, does he not kill, etc., etc.? He does, sir. Well then, Kalamas, what do you think? Are these things profitable or unprofitable? Unprofitable, sir. Are they blameworthy or not? Blameworthy, sir. Are they censured by the intelligent or not? They are censured, sir. If performed and undertaken, do they conduce to loss and sorrow or not? They conduce to loss and sorrow, sir. It is just so, we think. Then the Buddha said, So then, Kalamas, as to my words which you just, to you just now, be you not misled by report or tradition or hearsay, be not misled by proficiency in the scriptures, nor by mere logic or inference, nor after considering reasons, nor after reflection on and approval of some theory, nor because it fits becoming, nor out of respect for a recluse. But Kalamas, when you know for yourselves these things are profitable, unprofitable, these things are blameworthy, these things are censured by the wise, these things when performed and undertaken conduce to loss and sorrow, then indeed you reject them. Such was my reason for uttering those words. I just stop here to comment. Here the Buddha is saying that those unprofitable things, uh, blameworthy things, uh, which lead to sorrow and which are uh, censured by the wise, uh, you should not follow them. But then unless we Understand Dharma, it is difficult uh, to actually 
uh, distinguish what is right and what from what is wrong. Then the Buddha continued, Come now, Kalamas, be you not misled by report or tradition or hearsay, etc. But if at any time you know of yourselves, these things are profitable, they are blameless, they are praised by the intelligent, when performed and undertaken, they conduce to profit and happiness. Then, Kalamas, do you haven't undertaken them, abide therein. Now what do you think, Kalamas, when freedom from greed arises in a man, does it arise to his profit or to his loss? To his profit, sir. Does not this man, not being greedy, not overcome by greed, having his mind under control, does not he cease to kill, cease to steal, etc.? He does, sir. So in the same way, the Buddha talked about uh, freedom from hatred, freedom from delusion. And then the Buddha said, um, are these things profitable or unprofitable? And they said, profitable, sir. Are they blameworthy or not? They are not, sir etc etc so the buddha said uh, in the same way uh, that if they know for themselves uh, that these things are profitable that they conduce to happiness etc then they should be practiced uh. and the, the buddha continued now kalamas he who is an aryan disciple freed from coveting and malevolence who is not bewildered by self-controlled and mindful with a heart possessed by goodwill compassion joy, equanimity, etc. In this very life, uh, he attains uh, four comforts. First one, if there be a world beyond, if there be fruit and ripening of deeds done well or ill, then when body breaks up after death, I shall be reborn in the happy lot in the heaven world. This is the first comfort he attains. Second, if however there be no world beyond, and the last week, we finished at Sutta number 3.7.65, the famous Kalama Sutta. And I didn't, uh, towards the end, I didn't have time to make some comments. Huh? So I'd just like to say that this Kalama Sutta is one of the famous uh, suttas. Huh? And the passage in that Sutta, which is quite well known, is the one that says, be you not misled by report or tradition or hearsay. Be not misled by proficiency in the scriptures, nor by mere logic or inference, nor after considering reasons, nor after reflection on and approval of some theory, nor because it fits becoming, nor out of respect for a recluse, but kalamas. And you know for yourselves, these things are unprofitable, these things are blameworthy, these things are censured by the intelligent, these things when performed and undertaken conduce to loss and sorrow, then indeed you reject them. And conversely also for those things that are profitable and not blameworthy and praised by the intelligent, etc., so in this uh, famous uh, passage, the Buddha is actually giving advice uh, to people, not only during his time, but even right up to today and even in the future, that whatever uh, we come across uh, that is taught, uh, whether it is by tradition or what is heard or in the books or from logic, or from considering reasons and considering some theory, etc. Um, we have to consider it very carefully, uh, whether those, those things that are taught uh, are profitable or unprofitable, whether they lead to uh, loss and sorrow or they lead to happiness. But then, uh, as I mentioned the other day, it's quite difficult to actually judge uh, whether something that is taught uh, is correct or not. The only way uh, is to compare with other teachings. Uh. So it's very good to investigate, make a lot of investigation before we actually uh, conclude uh, that some teaching is right or wrong. We have to take the trouble to compare. Then we can see that whatever is said here and said there, if they contradict each other, then we have to think carefully. Uh, and as it is mentioned in some other suttas, uh, if we have a clear mind, 
And then we can practice Yoniso Manasikara, which is Tara consideration. When we have Tara consideration or Tara attention, uh, proper attention, proper consideration, then we can see things clearly. And that also requires uh, that we have a clear mind, which is a developed mind, and that which can be cultivated from meditation. Now we come to a sutta number 3.7.67. The Buddha said, Monks, there are these three topics of discourse. What three? One may talk of past time, saying, Thus it was in past time. Or one may talk of future time, saying, Thus it will be in future time. Or one may talk of the present time, saying, Thus it is now at present. Monks, it may be understood of a person by his conversation whether he is competent or incompetent to discuss. Now, monks, if this person, on being asked a question, does not give a categorical reply to a question requiring it, does not give a discriminating reply to a question requiring it, does not reply by a counter-question to a question requiring it, and does not waive a question which should be waived, then monks, such a person is incompetent to discuss. But if this person, on being asked these four sorts of questions, gives the proper reply, then he is competent to discuss. Again, monks, it may be understood of a person by his conversation whether he is competent or incompetent to discuss. If this person, on being asked a question, does not abide by conclusions, whether right or wrong, does not abide by an assumption, does not abide by recognized arguments, does not abide by usual procedure. In such case, monks, this person is incompetent to discuss, but if he does all these, he is competent to discuss. Again, monks, it may be understood of a person by his conversation whether he is competent or incompetent to discuss. If this person, on being asked a question, evades the question by another, or turns it off the point, or displays vexation, malice, and sulkiness, in such case, monks, he is incompetent to discuss. But if, on the other hand, he does none of these things, he is competent. Yet again, monks, it may be understood of a person by his conversation whether he is competent or incompetent to discuss. If, on being asked a question, he loads with abuse and beats down the questioner, laughs him to scorn, and catches him up when he falters, such a one is incompetent to discuss. But if he does none of these things, he is competent. Monks, it may be understood of a person by his conversation whether he is assured or unassured. He who lends not an ear is unassured. He who lends an, an ear is assured. He, being assured, fully understands one thing, comprehends one thing, abandons one thing, realizes one thing. So doing, he reaches the perfect release. This monks is a prophet of talk. This is the prophet of deliberation, of assurance, of giving ear to advice, namely the liberation of mind without grasping. And this sutta, you can see the Buddha, um, he says that there are various ways, the first thing, uh, there are various ways to answer a question. Uh, either you have to give a categorical reply uh, sometimes, or you have to give a discriminating reply. And sometimes a question uh, should be answered with a counter question. And sometimes a, 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 a nonsense uh, question should be waived, shouldn't consider it at all. And also, when you uh, discuss or argue with some person, you have to abide by conclusions, you have to abide by an assumption, by recognized arguments, by usual procedure. And there are some people who cannot uh, discuss or cannot uh, argue. They sometimes evade a question when they should not evade it, and they turn it off the point or show malice, sulkiness, and sometimes uh, they are abusive or very scornful, and uh, such kinds of persons uh, are not competent to discuss. Uh. So this is a, a guide to us uh, sometimes uh, when we discuss with us with other people uh, how to talk. Now the next sutta is 3.7.68. The Buddha said, Monks, if the wanderers of other views should thus question you, 
Friends, there are these three conditions. What three? Lust or passion, raga. Hatred, dosa. Delusion, moha. These are the three. Now between these three, what is the distinction? What is their specific feature? What is the difference? Thus question monks, how would you explain to those wanderers of other views? And the monk said, For us, Lord, things are rooted in the exalted one. Have the exalted one for their guide and resort. Well for us, Lord, if the exalted one would reveal unto us the meaning of this saying he has said. Hearing the exalted one, Lord, the monks will bear in mind. And the Buddha said, Then listen, monks, apply your minds closely. I will speak. And the monks replied, Even so, Lord. The exalted one said, Now if the wanderers of other views should question you, thus do you explain it. Reverend sirs, lust is slightly to be blamed, but it is slow to change. Hatred is much to be blamed, but it is quick to change. Delusion is much to be blamed, and it is slow to change. I'll just uh, stop here to comment. Eh? We notice here eh, that lust is said to be slightly to be blamed. Why is it slightly to be blamed? Because compared to the other two, eh, it is not so harmful in a sense. Eh, you, When you indulge in lust and passion, eh, you harm yourself, but uh, not so much other people. And whereas hatred, eh, you can do a lot of uh, harm eh, to many people and delusion also, delusion uh, out of ignorance and delusion. Eh. Sometimes you do a lot of harm and you don't realize it. Eh. Uh, so lust, eh, this, it is slightly to be blamed, but it is very slow to change. Eh. Lust is something that all beings in the realm of uh, sensual desire eh, uh, it is like a, a, a very strong tendency in, in, in all beings here. And hatred is much to be blamed but quick to change. Uh, and delusion is much to be blamed but it is slow to change. So you see of all these three, uh, delusion could be said uh, to be the worst. Uh, it is very harmful and yet it, and, and, and also it is very slow to change. Delusion, uh, uh, unless we take the trouble eh, to change. Eh, uh, it is very difficult to change this. And the, the incentive eh, for us to take the trouble to change eh, is suffering. When we are deluded, eh, then we suffer more. And when we suffer, then that, that is the thorn eh, that pricks us eh, to change ourselves. And then we try to investigate why we suffer. And then we study the Dhamma. Then we learn, we have to clear our mind by meditation, then we learn to meditate, etc. And then the, the Buddha said, uh, what is the reason, what is the cause? Uh, that means if the, if the wanderers ask, uh, what is the reason, what is the cause, why lust that has not arisen arises, or why lust that has arisen is liable to develop and grow? Uh, it is the feature of attractiveness must be the reply. In him who gives not thorough attention to the feature of attractiveness, lust that has not arisen arises, and lust that has arisen is liable to develop and grow. This sirs, is the reason, this is the cause. But sirs, what is the reason, what is the cause, why hatred not yet arisen arises, or if arisen is liable to develop and grow? It is the feature of loathsomeness or repulsiveness must be the reply. On him, in him who gives not thorough attention to the feature of repulsiveness, hatred arises. But why, but sirs, what is the reason why delusion arises? It is unthorough attention must be the reply. In him who gives not thorough attention, delusion arises. Now sirs, what is the reason, what is the cause, why lust not yet arisen arises not? or if a reason is abandoned. It is the feature of repulsiveness must be the reply. In him who gives thorough attention thereto, lust not a reason arises not, or if a reason is abandoned. But sirs, what is the reason why hatred not yet a reason arises not, or if a reason is abandoned? It is the release of goodwill by mind must be the reply. 
in him who gives thorough attention to the release of goodwill by mind, both hatred that has not arisen arises not, or if arisen is abandoned. But sirs, what is the reason, what is the cause, why delusion that has not arisen arises not, or if arisen is abandoned? Thorough attention must be the reply. In him who practices thorough attention, delusion not arisen arises not, or if arisen is abandoned. So, you see, uh, the Buddha just said uh, that lust uh, arises uh, due to attractiveness, the feature of attractiveness. If we see something is beautiful or attractive, uh, we, uh, the greed arises uh, and we lust for it. And, but to, uh, to get it, to, uh, to reduce the lust, uh, we have to see the repulsiveness in that thing. For example, uh, with the human body, uh, the, the Buddha said that uh, the attraction of the opposite sex uh, is extremely strong. So, to cut the lust uh, for the opposite sex, uh, we practice the contemplation of the 32 parts of the body, which is uh, meditation on the loathsomeness of the body or the repulsiveness of, of the body. Uh, in that way, when we understand how the body is made up of all the different parts, uh, which are, in a way, uh, are quite loathsome, uh, then uh, the attraction uh, for the body uh, uh, is reduced. And for hatred, hatred arises because of repulsiveness. We feel that something, like for example, somebody says something to us, uh, we feel it's so repulsive, there's so a hatred arises. And the way to overcome hatred is through metta. And that is goodwill or loving kindness. We practice meditation on goodwill or loving kindness. We try to spread metta. Then our hatred or anger reduces. And delusion arises from antara consideration. Uh, antara consideration. And uh, we can only get rid of delusion from practicing thara consideration. And we see that uh, thorough consideration, Yoniso uh, Manasikara, is important for all these three things, lust, hatred, and delusion. This lust, hatred, and delusion uh, are known as the three roots, uh, the three roots of unskillful action, uh, Akusala Kama. Uh, it's because of lust, hatred, and delusion that we live our lives very unskillfully. And when we live our lives unskillfully, uh, we suffer more than we ought to. Uh, there are certain types of suffering that can be avoided if we live a skillful life. But there are certain types of suffering that nobody can avoid. For example, uh, the body growing old, the body getting sick, uh, the body dying. Uh, those That cannot be avoided. But there are other types of suffering uh, which can be avoided. For example, if we drink and drive. If we drink and drive, then we get in an accident. And that is unnecessary if we had the skill uh, not to drink and drive. Uh, if you drink, you don't drive. If you drive, you don't drink. Uh, then uh, we would uh, do away with that unnecessary suffering. Uh, 